Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play American Ninja Warrior Challenge. We are starting a new career, ladies and gentlemen. This is Emerald Zoll from Cleveland, Ohio. She's a graphic designer with a background in gymnastics. Uh, basically, I decided to do all the setup for the brand new career mode off camera so you don't have to watch me go through all that. Uh, this is uh, what I picked for Emerald. Uh, this time around, um, I feel like I learned a little bit about myself when I was uh, creating a female character. Um, also, uh, we have, um, these are the stats that you start out with with the gymnast background. Uh, I know it's a bit of a risk because stamina is uh, lower than uh, the rock climber uh, starting stats, but I decided to take a chance because I want to do something different. And that's what I'm going for. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, just doing some training. And I'm going to continue doing that uh, custom training that I really enjoyed. Hey, they actually... That's convenient. They actually have it uh, set up for me uh, from last time. It's very nice. So we got focus, strength, a little bit of speed, and uh, stamina going on here. We're going to try this out and see how it goes. So here's the plan for the rest of this playthrough. I am going to play as Emerald. Um, we're going to have probably going to do about one uh, season per episode, depending on how I do. If I eat it in the qualifier round, I'll, <laughs> I'll probably do two seasons in a single episode. But if I go through the entirety of Emerald's career without claiming total victory, there will be one final episode where I just play the game until I beat the final stage. Because basically this, this playthrough is going on until uh, I, I claim total victory. Um, and then I'm stopping. <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's final stage, total victory, or, uh, or nothing in this case. Um, this will have a maximum of 11 parts uh, in that regard. Um, one other thing that is uh, worth mentioning is that uh, one of the things I decided to do is that in between each season, I'm going to change up Emerald's uh, look just to, you know, keep things uh, a bit fresh and different. You know, try not to, you know, because that's one of the things I didn't do with Octavia was uh, really just change up his look um, in between seasons, which is something I feel like uh, I should have done. What's interesting is that I... I'm pretty sure I can't change Octavio's look anymore now that the uh, his career is over. Because I am... Oh, look. It froze again. Thanks, guys. Oh. Okay. That was weird. So, yeah. I I'm pretty sure you can only change someone's look in the uh, in career mode. Which is really weird, because that means Octavio is forced to uh, look only the way that he does whenever you choose him for quick play or, or ranked mode or something like that. So, that's kind of lame. Uh, so yeah, so with Emerald here, I am going to change up uh, her looks in between seasons. Um, unless I forget. <laughs> Hopefully I don't forget. I'm putting a lot into focus at the moment. Um... Just because I, I really want uh, to build up that stat. I'm trying to decide uh, what I am going to do, though. I am going to invest some money into stamina. Because I don't have a lot of obstacles that boost stamina at the moment. So I'm going to just get that thing, get, just get that roll. I'm going to boost that up a little bit. Because I'm really hoping that I'll be able to beat the super wall flip uh, when we get to that that is coming up so I'm just gonna do two days in stamina just to get things uh, going and rolling a little bit um, so you know so that's uh, 11 to stamina over these past three training days and hopefully I can get 500 of those dollars back with this obstacle I got pretty good focus um, already because I feel like focus and stamina are the two most important stats in this game um, with strength being third and, and speed being fourth, quite frankly. 
Um, one other thing I should mention uh, that I'm doing that's uh, different compared to my uh, run with Octavio is that uh, for this run, um, if you didn't watch the last part, I uh, I changed the settings so that I'm allowed uh, five tries instead of just three. And I'm okay with this game allowing retries because, like, you know, it makes things a little bit easier. You can adjust the settings anyway if you want, like, the true A&W experience. But, like, oh, wow. Look at that hair pop in. And not load with the rest. But, like, one of the reasons I'm, I'm making this easier for me is just because I... Oh. Whoops. All right, let's try that again. Is that uh, I really just want to beat this game, and I've you know I've had technical issues so far when I was playing as Octavio, and that's been uh, that cost me in a few areas, and I just want to try to uh, mitigate some of that problems that I've had. I'm not gonna go with the infinite retries, which is an option, uh, at least not yet. <laughs> if things get really bad, then I'll go to infinite retries. And I am running out of time, but fortunately the buzzer is right there. If she just goes and hits it, please. There we go. All right, $500, just like that. I will say I have gotten better at this game with, like, the timing and all that. So I'll, I'll give that game... I'll give this game that credit in that I do feel like I have improved by doing the obstacles more often, which I guess is at the, the heart of Ninja Warrior. Even though I do think some of the um, obstacles are a bit, still a bit weird and unintuitive. And I do wish there was more variety in the actions outside of just pressing the button at the right time and, and holding. And honestly, like the whole releasing aspect uh, is a bit wonky with some of the controls, especially with, um, uh, I gotta make sure I have good stamina for the wall flip. So I'm just going to boost that one last time. And then we'll focus on regular training. Partially just so I can build up my money. So maybe I could actually unlock some stuff this time around. Uh, whether it be obstacles or costumes or whatever. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what happens this time around. And if I'll be able to achieve total victory with Emerald. So I'm going to give him my shot. I am worried about the... Um, on a curve because that has been giving me issues I would like to maybe unlock the sonic curve uh, with you know sometime soon because at the very least I can practice the sonic curve off camera in quick play mode just to get the timing better because um, you know I don't want to waste all y'all's time uh, so I'm just gonna try to do my best with this sort of stuff and one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately change it to pro because you waste, use up less stamina on pro it. mode, which will improve my chances of beating this uh, challenge uh, this early in my career. Fatigue is going to be a it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough because I don't know. Okay. To be burning right now. She seems to be struggling here. Oh boy, stamina's gonna be an issue. Stamina's well, gonna be an issue. Just come on, come on, come on, build it up. Oh boy, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be really close. Ah! Oh. oh no, I blew it with the stamina. Darn it. She is looking a little winded here. Nuts. Ah oh, man. Uh, I didn't manage my stamina correctly. I should have. I should have tried. Oh. That's unfortunate. I just didn't have the uh, the stamina stat to uh, to work things out. Uh, another thing that I want to work on is maybe unlocking one of those obstacles that will build stamina. In um, uh, when I do the training, just because uh, right now I'm only getting one point of stamina. When I do the course, ninjas watch fellow athletes run the course, hoping to pick up additional tips. Uh, this is what is known as beta, and uh, beta is a perfectly fine thing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having beta, and uh, quite frankly, 
I don't know, designing a competition around not having beta just seems very counterintuitive and not fun to watch. But that's a that's a conversation for another time, quite frankly. All right, we're going to continue to train. So this game's got issues. It, it, I think the sad thing is, is that, like, I really do want to like this game. But it just needed more time in the oven, so to speak. Just with, like, building more obstacles and, and stuff. But also just, like, you know, tightening up a lot of the bugs, you know? I think that's sort of, like, the frustrating part. I feel like I've gotten past a lot of the uh, anger that I've had <laughs> with this game early on. And I'm just sort of, like... I'm just sort of like focused and determined to, to try to beat this because I just want to I want to beat it. I do I legitimately do want to beat this game. But sometimes uh, it doesn't want me to beat this game. And so I don't know. Unless there's something outrageously bad in uh, stage two that I'm not aware of yet. And oh look, it froze again. I am kind of curious why that first A button press is constantly listed as being late. When, like, I don't even know what you're supposed to do there to not be considered late. And I didn't even bother recovering. <laughs> that could have been really bad. But, uh, no, it ended up working out. So, hey, good on me, I guess. Ugh. Um. Alright, now it's time for the qualifiers. Get some extra boosts. I'm really building up the focus. Uh, that's for sure. That... I just noticed that there was no speed stat. So I don't think I'm building speed at all. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again, but like, I am of the belief that, um, that, uh, the, um, you should get stat boosts for, uh, completing or even just competing in the other events, not just training. Because, like, um, you know, I played a bunch of the, the first Game Boy game uh, for Kinikun Banzuke, which is, uh, has the, you know, the Sasuke event. And with that event, uh, with that game, even if you fail um, obstacles, you know, you fail the course, you still get, you get stat boost as you go. Now, granted, it's a, it's a much simpler game, but, you know, that's a, a Game Boy game back in the day. So it's more understandable. Oh boy. So I re-listened to that audio from last time because uh, since Akbar just did it again. And so apparently what's actually happening is that Akbar is just saying his full name really quickly. Um, I guess it's supposed to be a funny joke, but... Ooh, okay. I am done. But, you know, you're... Kind of buggy. But like it's uh it's not really funny, quite frankly. Hey, pulled it off. Let go. Thank you. Let go functions very weird. Switch back. She's made it to the salmon ladder. So yeah, I don't understand like why they thought it'd be a good idea to have Akbar just say his full name really quickly like that because it just sounds like a gargled mess, quite frankly. You know, I, I think one of the other issues that I have with this game, I've said it before, but like the the obstacle selection is just quite poor, quite frankly. You know, I mean, you have Salmon Ladder in the qualifiers, which you would you never have in the main show. That is that is strictly a regional finals. Uh, obstacle, but yet here it is, you know, and here's here's the cliffhanger, which again also has never been in a regional uh, qualifier course. It's been in the regional finals before in uh, certain forms, um, but never in a regional qualifier. And it's just you can just tell that it's just because of a severe lack of obstacle variety in this game. Oh, yeah, I was intentionally made sure I was uh, a little earlier than I normally am on that obstacle. 
All right, so judging by my time, I'm probably going to have to clear the warped wall and move on. I'm a bit hit or miss on this obstacle, so let's see what happens now, shall we? Oh, all right, that's not good. Oh, let's get the shot. Oh, you still don't get three tries on the warped wall. Crap, 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 crap. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I mess up? Oh, no. I messed up. Oh, darn it. Oh, I can't believe I did that. It's only been 15 minutes, too. <laughs> uh, You know what? Let's just keep going. All right. So it's going to be a max of 10 seasons now. <laughs> 10 episodes now. Oh, man, I can't believe I messed that up. I am so sorry, guys. Um, it's tough in Season 1 because you just don't have the stats to do stuff. Um, I'm kind of curious about something. It might be something that I, I haven't noticed, but... I just want to see if the stats change if I switch back to the quadruple steps at all. It's... It's interesting because it's like you need to build your stats to make money and win events, but if but if you don't have money, you can't build your stats, but you need to build your stats in order to win the money. It's very tricky. It's a very tricky balance uh the economy of this game, and that's another reason why I I do believe that like you should build stats even for failing uh, challenges and, and obstacles, even though it's like, you know, small amounts of, of increase. Just because, uh, I just realized I'm supposed to, uh, change. <laughs> I, I said I was going to change, uh, every season, so I will do that after this training. This is, uh, this is, this is what Emerald did immediately after failing the qualifier to train for next year on American Ninja Warrior. And then she will change her look afterwards. And see how that works out. All right, I'm just gonna build up my uh, stamina because I don't want to make a. Uh, there's no. There's no benefit for going fast when there's no uh, upper time limit in this training mode. That's that. That's the real benefit uh, of doing custom. Is just that you don't have to worry about uh, time. You know, because because all the pre -made preset courses have a time limit, uh, which I just think is really counterintuitive to the whole, you know, idea of training. You know, or at least just give more time. And I just don't think they give you enough time for the pre-made courses, especially that strength course that has the cliffhanger. Because if you fail that deep, then like you're not clearing that course, and as a result, you're not getting any stat boosts as uh, as well. So, I'm really curious, um, also if, um, me changing to the number of tries made any- Oh, that's interesting. So I switch back to the quadruple steps and I get a higher speed bonus, but not when I use the qu quintuple steps. That's really interesting. Because I switched to the quintuple steps thinking it'd be better, but uh, it turns out that's not the case. Anyway, let's uh, let's give a little makeover right now. All right, here is the new Emerald Zoll for Season 2. Uh, decided to make her look more like a, a tennis player this time around. Maybe that'll give her some uh, better luck. And let's continue with the training then. Uh, yeah, I was just going to play this course. Um, after this, I'll decide if uh, I want to invest more money into uh, just working out at all. So let's see here. All right, so... You know, on paper, making a Ninja Warrior game makes sense. I mean, after all, uh, the main inspiration for 
uh, Sasuke, the original Japanese version of Ninja Warrior, is meant to be uh, based on Mario, uh, you know, Mario Brothers and stuff. Um, now, Kirikun Banzuke and, and by by uh, Sasuke as an extension, um, you know, is is sports inspired, but I mean, Sasuke was definitely uh, more of a uh, video game inspiration. Uh, it does make that sort of interesting because uh, there was a live stream of an event, uh, I don't know, a little over a month ago, that tried, like, making their own version of the event, and they claim that uh, by making the event more sports-oriented, that they were uh, taking the show back to its roots, which is ironic because, um, oh, darn it, because Ninja Warrior's roots was never sports. It, it, you know, it was sports inspired, but Sasuke was always meant to be a live action video game. It was never meant to be like this. It, it was serious. It was competition. It was an athletic competition, but it was never meant to be like a sport. It was never meant to be like what some people are claiming that it, it, it's trying to be. It, it just isn't. You know, Ninja Warrior is a game show. It, it can be turned into athletic events and stuff, but it's not a sport. At least not yet. There's definitely people who are going to try to turn uh, a version of Ninja Warrior into a sport, but like even stuff like, say, the NNL um, is not the same. It's not quite the same thing. It's, it's very different in that regard. Um... Focus is doing pretty good. Stamina, not bad, not bad. Um, I'm just going to keep doing this course until I get some more money. That's the big thing. I need money. In order to get money, I need to win. But in order to win and get money, I need to build my stats. So we'll see how that all works out. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, this particular, you know, live stream, they were, they were really harping, eh, my bad, you know, really harping on trying to, like, make it more of a sport and all that, and I just don't think it, it worked out very well. Like, the actual live stream was, like, nine hours, I want to say, and they did 25 runs, because the whole thing was so slow, because, like, the whole idea was, they didn't, the competitors didn't know the course ahead of time, and so they were blocked off until it was their time to run, in which then they were given uh, the rules video, and then they were given like a little bit of time to examine the course. As as an entertainment stream, it was very boring just because there was so much downtime in between. And then, you know, I, I don't understand this idea of like why beta is so bad because it doesn't. Like, I do understand the idea that going later gives you an advantage. Like, like, I get that. You know, there's a reason that Sasuke tends to put, you know, its better competitors or its its more popular competitors towards the end. It's for several reasons. It's to try to keep the viewer to keep watching, but it also gives them a better idea on how to do the course. There's no secret that the later numbers have an advantage in that regard but it's not a guarantee and it's you know sometimes that's just that's just the way life is you know and you know when you're trying to it's one thing if they did the event pre-recorded but the fact that it was live and had so much downtime really hampered what they were trying to do and also like you you just had like all these other issues with with the stream itself in that like you know the 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 MC kept on uh talking away from the microphone so his voice would go in and out uh basically like you know like this is me talking into the microphone right now and then you would have like a lot of times where like he's not talking directly into the microphone um, whether it's, you know, whether he's doing interviews and, and stuff like that, it's just, it was, it was hard to listen to sometimes, like physically hard to listen to. 
uh, just because of the way that he talked, uh, specifically the way that he talked into the microphone. Um, and then you had, like, you know, it had this weird point system where, like, I thought originally when they explained it ahead of time, I thought you can choose your own course, you know, cho- do the obstacles the way that you wanted to. But no, it was a it was a course that you had to do in specific order. But like each obstacle was worth a certain amount of points, but they didn't tell you ahead of time. But also you had this thing called a multiplier where you can chain the obstacles, which basically means not taking a break in between uh, obstacles um, for extra points. But like they don't know the points ahead of time, which is weird because it's like if you have to do the course in order outside of of the Really, if you're doing the course in order, what's the point of not knowing how much each obstacle is worth ahead of time? There's literally, it literally didn't make any sense. That's why when I, when, you know, they originally said that there would be no, uh, they wouldn't know what the points were for each obstacle. I thought, oh, you know, that could create some sort of strategy where, like, they choose which obstacles they'll do in which order. And then, you know, they'll see if they could, uh, you know, maybe... You know, maybe they'll go for a harder obstacle early on because it might be worth more points. But like, you know, risk reward sort of thing. Uh, speaking of uh, awards, uh, I get five hundred dollars if I complete the spider climb. Um, I only did this, this event once, if I remember correctly, and that was uh, I was still using pro controls, <laughs> I believe. So let's see if that works out. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Because um, last time I did a little floating in the air when I was. Uh, uh, landed on the uh, failure platform. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, having stamina is a big issue with this event. So we'll see if this works out. Get one shot to do this in 30 seconds. Uh, let's see. All right. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, I've only done this once, so the timing is very weird to me. Hopefully, I don't run out of stamina. I might run out of stamina. I'm gonna run out of stamina. Nuts. Ah, didn't have enough stamina. And and just because, like, that, that, those button presses was very weird. Because it was, it was release the Y button... And then press the Y button and then the B button. But, like, I was supposed to hold them. But it didn't say at any point I was supposed to let go of the B button. And, like, how long was I supposed to hold the Y button? That's the, that's one thing about this that I don't understand fully is, like, when you're holding obstacle buttons, like, when are you supposed to let go? Because there was never a prompt for letting go of uh, the B button, even though I'm supposed to hold the B button. And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't understand. I, I just don't understand. Um, so anyway, getting on uh, some more about talking about whether or not Ninja is a sport or a video game, or specifically Ninja Warrior is a sport or a video game. Um... I think, like, going back to that that particular live stream, it, like, I have no problem with people putting on their own events. I think it's great, but, like, this particular event, like, between, like, their sponsors, which I find kind of, uh, some of them kind of questionable, uh, both in just choices and also, like, they're, like, some of them, like, these weird, like, cannabis supplement things that claim to use like the non uh, hallucinogenic part of the, uh, the cannabis um, which I'm mm, I'm kind of like just the way that the host was uh, talking about it during uh, the sponsored segment I'm always sort of like wary of that type of speak of like how good some sort of uh, medical you know based uh, product is claiming to be and then you had like IV drips for recovery which is like I'm someone who doesn't like needles, and, like, one of the ads that they played showed someone getting a needle straight into the arm, which I'm just like, I didn't need to see that. 
Uh, and so that wasn't fun. Uh, and hey, late again. And I don't understand how that first A button press can be anything but late. So, yeah. I guess what I'm going to say is that, like, if you're going to do your own ninja event and try to live stream it, I think it's important to have a good pace and also to have rules that make sense to the audience. Because that was one of the things is that the rules didn't make sense. And also, like, they had this really dumb rule, quite frankly, in that the final obstacle wasn't going to be known to the competitors until they get to it, which is fine. I, I get the idea. You want them to try to act on their toes right away and, you know, quick reaction and all that. But it was a, it was a literal children's toy. <laughs> it was literally a children's toy where you had to put the shapes in the holes and you had to do it in, like, 20 seconds or something. And this obstacle was, like, apparently... Um, like, uh, worth more than any other obstacle. This was worth the most amount of points. No one completed it, so it didn't turn into a factor in the final rankings. But, like, I saw a really good point being made in the stream chat in that, like, you have an event where... It's like you're, you're, you're having an event where you're tr claiming you're trying to, like, make Ninja more of a sport. Because, you know, A&W is, is, is a reality show. And, you know, Ninja should be more of a sport. Bring you back to its roots, even though that's not its roots. But whatever. Um, but yet you have an event where the competitors don't know how much points every obstacle is worth. And you have them do, like... A children's toy as the final obstacle which are like two things that like reality shows would do <laughs> for for their events so it's like you you ironically made an event that comes across more as a reality show than than uh a and w does at times uh, in terms of the actual format of the show, like obviously they didn't have like all the, you know, all the sob stories or, or the profile pieces that they do on A and W, but in terms of the actual event, uh, you know, it felt more reality show gimmicky than uh, A and W did, and A and W's got some rule changes coming up. Uh, I don't, you know, Matt Nockbar said in a in a Facebook video that they have the power tower that they're introducing to the show. Um, I don't think I'm at liberty to say uh, what that power tower is or what uh, is involved with you getting that just yet. Uh, at least as of recording, they haven't publicly stated. How much time do I have before qualifiers? Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll keep that a secret at the moment, but uh, I am curious to see what people's reactions are going to be when they reveal the rules changes for this year. Uh, cause there's some, there's some interesting rule changes this year. That's, uh, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> some interesting stuff's coming your way this season on American Ninja Warrior. Um, so yeah, uh, if by some odd chance the people who are running this, who ran that particular live stream ends up seeing this, um, I think my biggest advice I, I would give them is like, quite frankly... The whole, like, not watching other people's runs and all that, I don't think works. Um, I think your execution of, of that particular uh, rule set didn't even work because you had several uh, instances in which people could definitely have, like, gotten some insider info. Because, like, uh, you know, like, in the very beginning when the, the MC is introducing the course to um, uh, the chat we're watching... Uh, he gets informed that uh, the viewers, uh, that the um, the competitors can hear them through the uh, the wall of the holding room uh, because he's so loud. <laughs> and then you have stuff like in the middle of people's runs, he would uh, the MC would say stuff like, "Oh, he's the he's the first person to cle complete this obstacle," or something like that. And it's like, I mean, you're 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 telling people, you're telling. The person running the course, how they're doing compared to the people ahead of them, and I think that's very that's not that's not right. That goes against what you're trying to do with this particular event that you're trying to to do, and so I, I just think it's uh, it's very backwards uh, with that. Um, and then you have um, I'm gonna do this event, 
And then you have, so the way they did it to try to make things go a little bit faster is that um, they show, they let people warm up uh, while the next person is going. But like, it's supposed to be like an isolation chamber, except like, it's just plastic. They could very clearly hear what's going on in the runs before them. And I remember there was an instance, I believe the last two competitors were Ethan Swanson and, and Barclay Stockett. They showed them like training, you know, warming up together. You know, they're in the warm up area together, and it's like, how do we know they're not talking strategy? Because they uh, presumably they both had seen the course already if they're in the warm up area, and it's like they very easily could just be talking strategy on how to do the obstacles. So I think execution wise, I don't think the show even accomplish like what they were trying to do which is create this you know supposed even playing field and even then you had this other sort of like bizarre twist on you know what they what they were trying to do where like the competitor who i believe took second place was like a regular at that gym and so it's like he probably had a lot of experience on the obstacles used for that course because there's a it didn't really seem like there was a lot different from the stuff that was normally in the course. There was some stuff that was different, but yeah, I do think that that person got some, uh, you know, just some practice just from being in that gym and, and training and stuff. And so third place, not bad. So yeah, I, I guess it's a shame because like I went into that live stream like expecting something good, you know, something fun. I'm always down for more Ninja Warrior stuff. And uh, it was just... It was a long stream. I had to... You know, I didn't, I didn't even watch the whole thing live just because it took so long. <laughs> it took so long for them to get through everything. Uh, should I spend money? Hold on. Let me double check the schedule here. Uh, um, let's see. Wow, my focus is already up to 67. That's pretty good. Should I spend money on stamina? Now bring me up to 54. And then with one training day, I can bring that up to to 55. Um, yeah, let's do that. Almost my entire prize money went into working out stamina. All right, this is the wall challenge. I have yet to beat this one because uh, the mega wall is pretty tough. And I don't have a lot of chance to practice it because I have to unlock the obstacle, which means I have to uh, raise a lot of money. That sort of thing, like some of these obstacles are so expensive. You know, some of them are, are, are 10 grand to unlock. And like you have events where you're making at most $2,500. You know, that's that's a quarter of that. So you, you would have to win four of these Mega Wall events, you know. And the $500 events, they're just not worth enough uh, to get you to that 10000 It this seems like crazy. Matt, in order to really so unlock long? everything, you really need to spend a lot of time playing it, just earning money and slowly but surely unlocking stuff. Are you kidding me? All right, all right, good. First try. Baby. Okay, now let's see if I can do this mega wall. Gonna... Uh, apparently, I didn't mesh A fast enough. Too late on that timing, and she seems to be getting uh, stronger the deeper she gets on this course. Last chance. Oh no! Uh, I, I don't know when I'm supposed to hit B. I feel like I'm hitting B right away. Like as soon as the A turns green, I'm I'm hitting B. I, at least that's what I feel like. But uh, I'm just not getting it. I don't know what I got to do to do that. I wish I had the ability to practice the Mega Wall, but I just don't. I think I'd have to do the Ninja Killer difficulty on Quick Play to get a chance to even attempt it. I'm going to have to do that uh, off camera just to try to, to build up my stats. Eh, Would have been nice if I had the money. I, I find it interesting that quadruple steps is better than the quintuple steps for building stats on this course. 
I'm kind of curious, like, what the, the breakdown of uh, obstacles and what they give and stuff. And I wonder if there's any sort of logic to the, the reasoning. But, yeah, this is, uh, this is the, the, the course format that I, I think is the best at the moment. I, I, just in terms of getting stats. But we'll have to see. All right. And let's see. So this is going to be pretty simple. So yeah, um, is there anything else I wanted to say about that live stream? I guess the only thing I'll say is that, like, you know, if you want to make, if you want to try to make ninja or a form of ninja a sport, that's fine. I got no problem with that. You know, you can, you can try to do it. Like I said before, I would love it if people proved me wrong in the, in the idea of ninja becoming a sport. But, like... That particular live stream was just very poorly executed uh, in a lot of ways. And I would hope that they, if they do one again, and they, they said they are going to do another one, I hope they take the time to address a lot of the issues that the stream had and improve upon themselves. And also, like, just kind of drop some of the uh the self grandstanding and uh you know the the patting yourself on the back cuz there was it felt like a there was a lot of like ooh we're so great we're making this a sport this is real and all that and, and all that like you know make your sound so great and like y you don't have it you don't have what it needs to back it up you know and and I I just, just want to harp on I don't you know I just want to reiterate Saying that you're taking Ninja Warrior back to its roots is very counterintuitive considering the roots of Ninja Warrior is a game show that used to be part of a much bigger Japanese game show that is inspired by video games. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a very athletic, you know, physical game show. At the end of the day, it's a video game inspired show. It, it's not... It was never really designed to be fully sport. Sport inspired... Maybe, but like, it, it it was never presented as a sport in Japan. Man, you would think qualifiers would be worth more than five hundred dollars? Like maybe a thousand? Like why not? Why is qualifiers not like worth a thousand? Because like the smaller events are worth five hundred. Like, so like it's like smaller events are worth five hundred. The really big events are twenty five hundred, and then you have the qualifiers, which are very important in terms of you know, clearing, you have to clear the qualifiers or you're eliminated. And they're only worth 500. And so I do wish it was worth more money. I am curious to see how much money you get for Vegas. I don't remember off the top of my head what stage one was worth because I only got there once. I'd have to go back to uh, Eisman, the video to see how much, uh, uh, how much money you get. But I hope that if you beat stage four, you get a lot of money. Because anything less than a lot of money would be, like, just a joke when it comes to this game. You should, like, honestly, if you get... Ooh, ooh, I'm phasing through the floor again. Ooh, boy. Not, not liking the way that looks with the falling through the floor. Makes me very nervous. Oh, hey, look, the jumping spider. You better bring your A game and the whole dang alphabet. Oh, boy. So strong, plenty of energy left. I feel like I've heard Matt say fighter. so strong, plenty of energy left so many times That's at this point that, decision. like, it's oh, actually getting kind of annoying it. at this point because it's just so darn repetitive. Yeah. All right, now here's the broken bridge. I'm just going to... Hey... I probably didn't need to do that, but I chose to. I still find it weird that, like, you have you have quick time events and immediately quick time events and it replaces the other quick time events. Because, like, whenever you press ZR... Okay, hold on. I can't mess this up again. Oh, my God. No, not again. Oh, what?! At the warped wall. I what am I doing wrong? I'm pressing. Oh. <sighs> I 
Well, we're off to a great start here. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I did I did it during the warp wall challenge, but apparently I can't do it during the qualifiers and I don't I don't understand. I'm I'm just Especially cuz like it keeps saying I'm doing it late, but I don't feel like I'm doing it late. I feel like I'm hitting it early actually. And so that just sort of brings up the question is like what is the right timing? I don't understand. I just don't under stand and maybe I'll figure it out someday but um, not today that is it uh, for now I look forward to seeing you in the next part of Let's Play American Ninja Warrior Challenge we'll take on season 3 and hopefully I don't finish in the qualifiers again and I actually get past the qualifiers I can't believe I'm regressing I mean I know my stats are lower so maybe that's partially to do with it but Man, this is it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I feel like I should be able to do it, but yet I'm not. And that's just what's bothering me. So we got the super broken bridge, so look forward to um the game crashing on me again like last time. Uh building up 24 focus in season 2. That is crazy. I'm very surprised in how much I built up. I'm going to have like max focus by the time this is done aren't i that's gonna be interesting that's gonna be really interesting to see anyway all right i'll see you all for part three when emerald will have a new look and hopefully i'll be able to get back to vegas and maybe even beat all four stages but until then thank you all for watching i'll see you later